What's up, Prime fam? What's going on, guys? You're looking at a Stoked Athletics movement preparation tablet. My boy, Matt Cronin of Stoked Athletics, sent this over to help me out. If you want the sob story, and if you want to know why there is no better coach with a better pullout game than your boy, Brendan, fast forward to the end of the video because I am pulling out of my meat that you guys have been watching me prepare for. The sob story's at the end. Let's stay with the informative stuff up front because this is actually a blessing in disguise because I'm actually learning so much from this experience, especially thanks to Matt Cronin uh, for his help. Guys, I'm doing for this first movement here before I get on the bar to squat. I'm doing a hem and bridge 90 90 with reach. I'm essentially driving my feet into that pad, that bench, as hard as I can while squeezing a foam roller between my legs and reaching towards the ceiling while breathing deeply. I'm getting adductor activation, low hamstring activation, core activation, and scapular protraction. What you'll notice here, this is a theme of things that I'm very bad at. Same thing here. I'm doing a stacked Bulgarian split squat, or excuse me, just split squat. I'm trying to keep my knee stacked over my toe with my toe pointed completely forward, and I'm trying to reach with the opposing arm, trying to get a lot of uh, spinal rotation, scapular protraction, and a ton of adductor activation. I'm essentially doing things I'm very bad at. I have what's called a lot of extension tone. I squat extended, I, I'm overextended naturally, I'm a conventional puller with a ton of posterior dominance, I'm just naturally always extended, but even more so for you guys at home, all of us as power lifters kind of do these things normally. We always externally rotate, we always, you know, extend, we're always doing these things that um, we're biasing a little too much. What I'm doing here with these movements is kind of doing the opposite of what power lifters do a lot. What you'll notice here, there's a theme. Uh, I'm getting a lot of internal rotation, a lot of adduction uh, activation or, or adductor activation. I'm uh, going very toes forward. I'm getting my ribs down. I'm actually flexing my spine here I'm protracting the, the scapula I'm doing things that we never do as power lifters to kind of help stabilize and balance out some things before we squat but specifically for me I'm doing this to really help out with a lot of my issues as well uh, I'm kind of the extreme example of the opposite of what you're watching on the screen this final movement here uh, this row with a reach I'm getting a ton of spinal rotation a ton of scapular protraction I'm keeping my hips centered while all the movements coming from the uh, torso and the shoulder. And so these are the movements I'm doing before I squat to kind of bias those positions and then I get on the bar and squat. Um, what I want to show and talk about today is, is how I'm getting back to volume, how I'm staying healthy. I'm doing some ascending sets here, building up on squats. Uh, and I did get to a semi top set. I'm not too banged up. The story will be explained at the end of the video. I, I just basically pulled out of the meat because I didn't want to make it worse. And there's some things that just really weren't in my control the day that the injuries kind of came back. I was feeling super healthy, but that's neither here nor there. Let's talk about what I can control. Um, and that's my squat here. Sets of four, uh, sending sets. That was 451. Pretty much smoked that. Uh, I went up again. I think I went up to like... 470 something the the weight will be on the screen here i did two reps but i felt the knee bugging me again so i decided to to stop after the second rep even though i was supposed to do ascending sets of four and i just called it there on squats i want to be safe i want to be smart and i'm actually not too beat up again i just pulled out of the meat because i didn't want to make anything worse there's a lot of things that i still want to uh prepare for but on a new positive note uh my boy andrew tang here the newest prime family member uh of the group i want you guys to go wish him in the, the comment section below go go wish andrew welcome to the family the prime fam he's a fucking freak beast this kid's 19 and he's already squatting close to what i'm squatting uh he's doing some ascending sets here uh he's he's supposed to be doing a squat but he's basically just doing a sit down stand up because it looks that easy on him we're just going to call that exercise that from now on uh he built up to some heavy squats on this day also doing ascending sets like i was i'm going to be talking about uh programming tactics like ascending sets like fatigue drops some things uh in my podcast so stay tuned for that um but yeah your boy Andrew here, he built up to the single. He actually went heavier than this, but my camera didn't record it, and he did it for a double, actually. He ended up hitting uh, five pounds under his best squat ever for a double at like RP7, so that was cool. Uh, Mama Prime herself also getting ready to peak. Even though she was still gonna do the meet, she decided not to just because I couldn't do it. And she's gonna stay, uh, she's just gonna test in the gym. So she's still staying on program here. She built up to this single for the day, her final heavy single on squats before she tests. And uh, oh, there's a new, another new Prime Fam uh, member here, Adrian. I just want you guys to listen to this first.
Oh, wow. Yes, she does listen to Pirates of the Caribbean for PRs. Uh, she's actually under Mama Prime. She's under Kristen. She just actually hit her best. Five pounds under her best squat ever, too, for a single there. Looked like RP six or seven. She's already gained a ton of strength in like four weeks under programming with Kristen. So she's doing really well. Uh, Luis here, he was hitting his final singles on squats and deads before his meet. He is doing the meet that I pulled out of, so he's still doing it. Uh, look at that beautiful wedge deadlift, just like we talked about in last video. Luis has come such a long way. He came to me very green in the powerlifting world, and he's already looking like a vet with his technique. Give the kid a few years, everyone's gonna know his name. You guys will see it. Uh, Mama Prime here with her last heavy deadlifts also. These weren't actually too heavy. We we always peak deadlifts. Uh, we take the last heavy deadlift usually two weeks out for most people. The week before testing and or um, being in the gym or being on the platform, we usually take it pretty light about RP6. Um, I'm doing some stiff bar deadlifts here for volume. I'm going to stay on the stiff bar for a while. I smoked this, guys. I'm, I'm super proud of this. 550 for a set of four. And honestly, this was like about RP three or four. I probably had 10 to 12 in me there. I called it there again, just trying to be safe, not aggravate anything. Uh, and then I was just focused on on my guys here and, and getting them ready for the next Saturday and then just uh, preparing Andrew here to keep working this work capacity. We were working on his bracing. I have a whole portion at the end of this video talking about bracing. You guys will see it there. Fast forward if you want to get to it, but I was trying to help cue him on this. It's going to take some time. This is a very different style of brace than most people use or have been taught over the years. And I'm trying to teach him here for a sumo deadlift because I think it will hugely help him out. And it's, uh, specifically with sumo deadlift, it really helps on uh, preventing hip pain. So I was uh, kind of cueing them here, and you can see the smoothness of these deadlifts compared to the last. They look a little bit more controlled, I think, because of that brace. But this kid's a freak beast, man. The USAPL will know this 19-year-old uh, next year. Uh, oh, here's Mama Prime's client, Adrian, killing out some deadlifts. We're all in our snow gear in here because the gym's been freezing. Again, I think this was a f also five pounds under a max. She's killing it, but let's get to the fun stuff, guys. What's up, Prime fam? What's going on, guys? So I've been getting a lot of questions lately, and if you follow me on Instagram, you saw my post about this. I wanted to talk about my bracing tactic. A lot of people still ask me questions. I've had a brief video on this in the past, but they ask me questions on how I can pull so tension with a slightly purposefully rounded back in my conventional pole. And they've also uh, wonder how I've gotten around certain back problems when I've been deadlifting and how I can brace uh, on a sumo without hip pain. I touched on this on, on Instagram, if you follow me there, but I was explaining that usually speaking when people deal with hip pain uh, in a sumo deadlift, oftentimes it stems from bracing tactics that I'm gonna teach you here today how to get around it. Um, the problem is, is, is usually from control of our, our pelvic musculature or our pelvis. Once we get that in control, we can sumo usually hit, uh, hit pain free and we can also uh, pull conventional with a lot less SI joint problems, low back problems. And I also feel this is a stronger brace for some people. Now there's different bracing tactics out there. This I recommend for people who have overextension issues in their low back. So if their low back sticks out a lot and they're very uh, overextended interior pelvic tilt. I also recommend this for sumo pullers. Uh, not all of them, but most of them. And I, I recommend it for people who just have some injury issues down below. I'm gonna show you today. I want you to listen carefully because this is more than just bracing. This is also proper activation and alignment and control of the muscle bellies down below. So I'm gonna show you here. Go ahead and come over to this side so I can show them this. I actually, I actually do a draw and brace. So I do not brace outward. When I squat, I push into my belt a lot and I think like more like downward with my brace and like into the belt. With this, I'm actually drawing my, my stomach inward and I'm trying to get the low hip flexors, the psoas, especially uh, the obliques, which uh, kind of posteriorly tilt the pelvis and the low ab musculature to kind of kick on and keep my pelvis under me. I'm someone who deals with overextension, so I've had issues with my SI joint and my uh, low back being very tight and, and screwing my deadlift. And the way I get around this is by getting those muscles on and they actually activate a little bit better when we stand tall and draw in instead of the usual more kind of flexed over, um, uh, flex brace position we see people use with their belts. So the first thing is when we line up on the bar and we have our feet set, what I want you to notice here is how my low back is naturally arched out. I have a lot of extension here and interior pelvic tilt. 
What I want to do is lightly squeeze my glutes to get out of that, and that'll, you'll notice here if I, I really squeeze my glutes hard, it posteriorly tilts the pelvis. That's, that's too much. We just want neutrality through here. So first I lightly squeeze the glutes, and then from there, I think I'm uh, to stand tall and draw my stomach inward. So what I'm doing, if I actually just show here my stomach, normally when it's puffed out like this, this is me relaxed. You can see it looks like I have a little gut because I've been eating a little too much lately. What I do is I actually draw this in nice and tight and tall. And I try to create a ton of tension here in that low psoas, low oblique, low ab region. And I think I'm pulling it in and tight and tall. Now the problem with this is we often overextend when we do that, especially if you're like me with an extension tone to our body. So from there, what I'm trying to do is squeeze the glutes under a little, draw in, I set my shoulders back and down, and then I breathe out to bring my ribs down. And so what I've done is I've neutralized the pelvis from the glutes, I've neutralized the pelvis from the hip flexors and abs, and I've neutralized my um, spine up top, the T-spine, from keeping my ribs down. The ribs down is huge. While I do squat with my ribs flared on a deadlift, I do not do this for my, uh, or I'm, I squat with my ribs flared on the squats, I do not do that during my deadlift. I try to keep my ribs down. So you're kind of doing a ton of different little activation drills first, and then we're gonna brace into that. So again, it's gonna be glute squeeze, draw the stomach and abs in, Get tall, shoulders back and down. Breathe out. And I'm holding this. And if someone comes punch me, it's tight. Most people, they try to breathe in and push out or push down. So they kind of do this. And they kind of hunch over. But the problem with that is it, it biases a flexion position. This, I find, really helps keep neutrality in my back. So again, glute squeeze, draw in on the core and get this all long and tall and tight. Shoulders back and down, ribs down. And you can see here, if I tighten my shirt, there's a lot of neutrality to here. This is tall and long and tight. This is tight and neutral back here. Ribs are down, okay? So glute squeeze, tall and tight. Shoulders back and down, breathe out. Ribs down, and then a huge breath into the stomach. And that's how I can pull really heavy with a very neutral and extended back. When I go beltless, I always bias neutrality and extension, and I can keep my back very tight like this. When I throw on a belt, I do actually purposely enter flexion in my start position, but I brace exactly the same. And when we breathe in, I'm actually breathing into my belt. So you're still feeling the stomach outward. It's the same breathing tactic. It's the activation that's a little bit different. It's the pelvic control down here. So again, the difference is most people, they just line up on the bar and they have their stomach like this and they just think, breathe into the stomach tight. But it biases kind of flexion. For me, I'm thinking tall and long in here. So glute squeeze, draw in, shoulders back and down, ribs down. And I get really long and neutral in here. And then I breathe into that position. And then I go and I hinge down to the bar. The next thing I'll do another video on is how to actually get down to the bar. Because you'd be shocked how you can do all this and then lose it. You have to keep that tension all the way down. But I just wanted to show my bracing tactic on the deadlift for today. What's up, Prime Fam? What's going on, guys? It's 12.45 p.m. on November 27th. I am 12 days out from my powerlifting meet, which you've been following along on my YouTube channel, seeing me prepare for, and my girlfriend and some of my clients. And uh, really, as of this last Saturday, but officially today, I've decided that I'm going to pull out of the meets once again. Uh, if you've been following me along, or if you've been following along with me on Instagram for a long time, you'll know I have not done a powerlifting meet that was sanctioned since uh, September 12th, 2015. I remember the date because it was the day after my mom's birthday. Uh, I haven't done an actual meet since then. I've incurred countless injuries. I've torn a lat, torn a tricep, torn a hip flexor, uh, extremely bad pec tendinopathy, extremely bad quad tendinopathy, uh, this patella pain that came back the other day. Uh, QL, uh, spinal sprains, uh, joint sprains, uh, everything. I, I had my SI joint hurt for eight months straight. I couldn't squat anything besides a front squat or sometimes a high bar. 
Uh, I couldn't do any volume. My quad tendinopathy was so bad at one point I couldn't walk up the stairs. I've, I've just been beat up. Uh, this is the first time though that I've ever gotten this close again to actually doing a meet and PRing everything. Um, two weeks ago I tore a subscap or something deep in my armpit, rotator cuff region, doing a bench press, haven't been able to bench. That didn't stop me. I wanted to still do the meet. Uh, then I went into the gym. Some stupid stuff happened that really wasn't even my fault. My knee started hurting on squats. Couldn't get through any of my volume during my most important week on the peak. Uh, I was still thinking, okay, at least I'll have deadlifts even if I don't PR my squats. Uh, and then I went to go pull a deadlift that day. Uh, on this, this past Saturday, both of these things happened with the squat and the deadlift and my spine popped. Uh, I felt a pop halfway up or, or actually just right off the ground. 640 felt heavier than shit. It, it, there's a lot of reasons as to why this happened. It wasn't actually really my fault with some of it. Um, and so I decided today that I'm not gonna do the meet. It was funny, the irony of this is that I was posting on my story before this happened on Saturday. The pec thing had already happened, but the um, I was still under the influence. I was gonna do a powerlifting meet and I ended up um, posting how some of my clients were coming to me that day because most of my clients have their heaviest days on Saturday because I lined up with acute fatigue and they were complaining, some of them, about uh, their performances that day even though they've had countless PRs literally a week before and weeks before. Um, they have one bad squat day or one bad deadlift day and they complain about it and I was expressing how this negative mindset can really negate the body and actually alter your future performances hugely. I don't think people talk about mindset enough and I posted this whole long story about it and then right after I did that my knee fucking decided to shoot a stabbing pain to the kneecap uh, every time I took a step and then this, the back thing happened with the deadlift and I was talking about how important it is to when you face adversity have a, a positive mindset. So it's kind of ironic because right after that I wanted to kind of cry <laughs> when all this happened and it was just very difficult for me to uh, swallow the pill again that once again I'm gonna pull out of a meet. It's been four fucking paid meets that I've paid for since 2015 that I've lost my money on and I don't actually care about the money but I've actually signed up for four meets and paid for them that I've had to pull out of. I've said I'm gonna do seven meets since then. I went back and counted the other day. Seven total meets that I've planned to do since 2015 and all of them I've pulled out of. Uh, it's gone on over three years now uh, and it'll probably continue on to three and a half, four years before I get into a meet, but I am hopeful. Today I'm gonna be showing you what I'm gonna be doing for some warm-up stuff. I have my buddy Matt Cronin now helping me out with my movement preparation because I, I got lazy with certain things and there's more that I still need to learn and he's helping, uh, helping me out with this. He's gone through a lot of injuries himself and he's studied this countlessly and he does this with his clients. So he uh, offered to help me for free, uh, which I highly, highly appreciate, uh, more than I think he even knows. And I tried paying him, but he wouldn't let me. But um, I'm gonna be showing you some of the warm up things he's gonna have me do. Uh, and some of it we're gonna talk about today, why some of this stuff may be happening with my pec tendinopathy, my subscap tear and this patella pain and QL pain that I'm dealing with. Um, I guess this intro though is really to just kind of express that I'm here, I'm talking, I'm happy, I'm about to train, I'm, I'm smiling and uh, I'm not giving up. So many people are, are faced with adversity and they, they crumble like after one injury or one bad day of training or, or you know, it's, it's easy to do this shit when you're PRing every other week or, or even just, you know, constantly getting to the platform and hitting PRs there. Try going to the gym and giving it your all, spending three to four hours a day in the gym, five days a week for three years straight with not a single PR in sight on the platform. And I, I tend to get about a one RM PR every year and a half, if that, and it's usually by like 10 pounds. Um, but I'm still doing this because I love this and I don't think we know enough. I think there's still so much I can learn to be able to get there. And I, I actually have hope that I will still be incredibly stronger than I am now someday if I can get the right guidance. It's been progressive. This is the closest I've ever been to a fucking meet in a long time. Most of the time I pull out seven, eight weeks out. I was days out, uh, specifically 14 days out. And uh, then something bad happened and it wasn't actually even really my fault this time. I think I could have got in there if some circumstances hadn't happened. Anyway, enough fucking talking. Uh, my prime fam's keeping me going. I'm still killing it with the coaching and everyone else is PRing. I got a bunch of guys competing that same day actually anyway. So I will live through them vicariously and I will continuously work my ass off to still get to the platform. I'm gonna splice in the clips now of me lifting and talk about what I am doing to combat all this. Uh, 
And hopefully you guys listen to this little spiel because I think it's important to hear certain things about mindset, especially coming from a coach who's dealt with this shit a long time.